Yo, what's going on guys? Jared here, back at it again with another video, and this is going to be an updated Godi profile. I know I just did one the other day, but like I said in that uh, profile, I really didn't like the list I was at. Um, I really didn't have high expectations, and just like I thought, I did not do well in the beginning of the tournament. I had to drop after round two, though, because my dog was having um, a medical issue, and I had to go take her to the vet, so I had to drop. But um, overall, like the deck, when it, it worked, it worked very well. But when it didn't work, it really didn't work well, especially in tandem with against things like hand traps and going second, especially as a big one. Um, losing the dice roll with Godi is extremely hard. And I have made a lot of changes to this deck. So I'm going to show you them, explain them, and then tell you why um, for certain things because it, it looks it's going to look super different. So overall, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, subscribe if you do and we have any suggestions for Godi or the fish cards down below in the comments because uh, a lot of more time went into this than I was expecting to be honest. Okay guys so here is the list I am currently at. I know you're probably thinking Jared where's the Godis? Where are they? They're here. They're just all here. They're all in here and all over here. So um Going back to how this deck functions, I'm going to explain the cards themselves and then go and then I'll explain like the re the ratio reasons. I think that's the easiest way to do it. So 12 non-engines. Getting 12 en non-engine here was very good. I really like this a lot better. Needing those extra cards to help you go second to combat. If you get stopped, you can stop them, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these hand traps are really solid. Um, you could put Nibiru over Imperm to help with the Fire King stuff, but that's besides the point. This isn't, what, this isn't really what I want to talk about. Point is you have 12 spots here. Um, what I want to talk about more is this package, the white package. Um, as you can see, I am no longer playing Dimension Shifter. And that, I think, is necessary to be um, the most like competitive version of this deck. Because the deck fundamentally as it is like based off banishing monsters. At the same time, it also cannot banish all of its own monsters in a way because of how, let's say, the level 6 works or how this level 6 works. Like, you do need stuff in the graveyard to kind of function, and it's very odd and different and, like, annoying, but, um, but these cards are so good. They add so much value, so much extension. Um, like, it's, they're just so good, and I really, really like them. So pretty much what they do... White Sardine will be, I would say, one of your, um, like, well, this is pretty much, they're all really good. <laughs> um, while White Sardine's in your hand, you can send another White Sar Sardine from your deck to the graveyard to special it. And then uh, if itself is specialed from the graveyard, it becomes a tuner. That's all the white monsters. They all have that last effect. Um, white Sunfish is, if it's in your hand, you can target a level four lower fish uh, in your that you control and in your graveyard with the same name, special itself from the hand, and then summon the monster with the same name from your graveyard as well. So obviously Sardine can send Sardine, and you have Sunfish, Sunfish bring back the Sardine you just sent, and special summon itself. So now you have a two non-tuner, a six, I'm sorry, a two non-tuner, a two tuner, and a four non-tuners. Um, no normal summon, very good. And then White Reincarnation searches either one of these, which is very strong. I looked into the other white monsters. Neither of them are that great, what the uh I think it's the Sunray Stingray one was like okay, but it's just not worth it in my opinion. Point is, on activation, search either white monster. If a white aura monster is attacked, it can attack or attacked, it can attack again at the end of the damage step. So you get two attacks with something like the whale. Um and at, at the same time, if something if a white aura or if a level eight or higher fish synchro a special summon from the graveyard, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls. The last effect doesn't come up too much. It's mostly to search. That's the main thing. Um, it also it can help with OTKs too with the uh, attacking twice. But again, main thing searching consistency big. Um, so yeah, this package very very good. Um, also, I am doing more stuff with Abyss Shark now. I find myself using this card a lot more because I think this card is like broken fish support. It's like a card that is locked into such a mediocre at best type of cards, sadly. Like, it's one of those, like, this card's broken, but you have to use it in this type of deck. And it really, that's like the restriction that it has. So, overall, um, Abyss Shark, very strong. The cards that Abyss Shark is searching for, I have lined up right here, which is the two Sunfish, the one Weafless Life Fish, and the one Silent Angler. I don't want to play more of any of these. Like, you're, you have to think of this deck almost as like a giant fish toolbox, and you can move around the different cards in ways to get to what your end board you want it to be, which usually is the level 6 Goaty Synchro, 
Um, but a lot of the times now with how this deck works is you can actually do more. Like you can end with like maybe something like a Dragite. Um, you can end with stuff like the Kraken more often now, along with the level six synchro and stuff coming back. So you get a lot more options and versatility with what you're playing now, which is very nice. Um, I am also playing to search the Abyss Shark. This might be controversial. I am not sold on this yet, but this is just something I, it was another slot that I wanted something to help consistency to be able to play. And that was Mermaid Shark. Um, Mermaid Shark can get your engine going. It's just a different route. You have to go like Mermaid Shark for Abyss Shark, Abyss Shark for Life, uh, Life Leash, and then, um, what Life, and then, uh, link off the Abyss Shark and the Mermaid Shark to go into Abyss Keeper, Abyss Keeper summon the Life Leash, and then Life Leash send the, uh, Shift, and then Shift banish itself, and then your opponent's turn, you can go to the six, and then you get your ball rolling. Um, so this can work. It's just another normal summon. I wanted to stick this to like five normal summons with the things you want in normal summon. Um, and then like, you know, this stuff over here, the goatee monsters, which I'm going to talk about now, actually. Um, the goatee monsters themselves are the probably actually the worst cards to draw because you really don't want to draw them. We're not playing goatee runic where you want to see like a goatee plus a, a runic card to go into like um, the Cupid Knight or the Cupid pitch to then do your combo that way. You're doing your combo in a different lines, and the goatee cards don't add to that. Furthermore, seeing these in the later stages of the game are really bad. Like, you don't want to be, already have your ball rolling, and then be drawing into, like, more paces, more shift. Um, I only played one Zep anyway, but other stop copies of Kiff. These cards don't do anything once you have them going. And all the, the, the goatee cards can go essentially infinitely with how they operate. It's so, like, when they're going, they're crazy. And, but, like, because of that, like, a lot of them already get to each other, so you don't need to play more of them in the draw. Like, once you get to the level 6 Synchro, the level 6 Synchro gets to this. This Search is one of them. Um, banishes the, uh, you know, summons itself, Search. Banish one, your opponent's turn. You're able to Synchro this off, get this, summon this again, um, get the other one or the Zap. And then, like, your, your ball's rolling enough where you don't need more. Like, you already are doing enough. Everything else is just extra. So, you, you really don't need to play more of these. They're, like, honestly, like, the worst cards in the deck, I feel. The more, uh, not like the worst, I think that's a bad term, not the worst cards in the deck. They're, they're, they are your interruptions, your mo your main interruptions, but they're not like these cards that you just always want in your hand. Like it's nice, it's it's okay to see them because you can normal summon them and then synchro with them still. Like that's like still an option, but they're not like this, they're not like combo starters, they're not extenders, they're not doing anything like that. So, and then lastly, Kif I wanted to talk about, just because t Kif doesn't actually like, contribute a lot to be honest it's like a very mediocre interruption that your opponent can play around pretty easily it is a good card don't get me wrong and you can set this up in some like cheeky ways to maybe change some stuff or um depending on what deck their opponent's playing it can be annoying to play around but like overall kiff isn't that great i do play one just because he's just something else to come back especially a non-tuner is important like if you get all three of these banished and then being able to go into the fish lamp and the fish lamp into this guy again so you can like keep the ball rolling but overall, you really, he's not like necessary, necessary, but he's, he's good enough to where I'm like, okay, I can justify one copy of him as just another option because of how the fish cards operate. Um, oh, and B Butuniful Pin uh, Princess, I'm actually playing three of them now as the normal summon of choice because you can choose what you want to summon off this, right? You can choose if you want to go in the life leash or a goatee. So this card having the option to go into a goatee or a life leash is very important. Um, and then also being able to send something like sardine off of life, uh, life leash is also pretty solid because you can use something like Coral and Enemy to bring back the Sardine and make it a tuner. Same thing applies to White Sunfish. These are just like just a little line that I feel like not a lot of people know about because um, Coral and Enemy actually does not negate the monster's effect. It just summons it back from the graveyard with 1500 or less attack. So um, it's just, it's really good. Like you, it's a way to get a tuner in combo lines where you really wouldn't have a tuner. So it's very helpful. So even Sardine by itself as just like, okay, special summon itself, send another Sardine. Um, like you can have just like a bish shark and then a bish shark can, and can grab life lease, life lease can dump, uh, paces or I'm sorry, shift. And then you can sync, uh, synchro or link in the coral anemone with the abyss shark and the, um, in the white sardine and then use an enemy and then bring back the sardine and then synchro with the life leash to go into this guy still. So then you have like the shift in the graveyard and this guy's triggering the get piskies and then piskies going to get another, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of hard to explain, but it, it works. Like this works much better than it was before. Everything feels very fluent together. 
Um, and then again, like I said, you have the non-engine that helps a lot, and you have a lot of extenders too, things like one for one. The white cards are all extenders. The uh, Silent Angler could be an extender. The level six could be an extender. Um, the level two that you can summon from the hand could be an extender. Abyss Keeper being able to get anything out of the hand is an extender. Um, all these things really add up to good value. For the extra deck, I cut down on some of the synchros. Right now, I'm at two of the level six, two of the level eight, two of the, of the deep beyond. This is just current. I don't know how I want to pr proceed from here, but right now, this is where I'm at, especially with something like Prosperity. I really have to choose. I find myself prosperitying for three most of the time rather than six, depending on how my hand is, because I don't think I want to sacrifice that many extra deck cards because there's some of them are really good. But yeah, um, moving forward, we have one copy of Dragon now. I finally put him in. Um, very good. This card comes up a lot. I find myself making it all the time now. So like a lot of times, I've had my end board be like six... Dragite and Kraken and then like one or two tuners coming back and then you can like that that's like the combo one right like that's like a good like four or five interruption board which is really solid um again this is like not counting hand, you being hand trapped at certain points but still again still really solid um fish lamp is in here again I don't necessarily like this card it's just in here because when you get those times where like you're getting back like Pacey Schiff and Kiff it gives you a line like just playing this card gives you a line to move forward <laughs> Excuse me, which I really do like, but other than that, this card being a fire really sucks. Like it really puts a hindrance on it because stuff like um, white sardine locks you in the waters. So you, like, you can't even use it with that. Um, there's other cards that lock you in the water too, but like it, this being a fire just feels so disrespectful by like, Konami to fish players. Like this card is so obviously built for this deck, and it's just a fire monster. So they shafted it super hard for some reason. I really don't know why. Um, the White Aura Por Porpatees is also a very good card. It's like a double monster reborn when it's Synchro Summon, and it comes up with the White Sardine a lot because you can turn a level four and two sardines. Um, you can do like a Coral Anemone line and then go into the six then, and then that brings back both sardines and then both sardines and then one of the sardines, and that can turn into the uh, Axcon or the uh, Dragite. And yeah, it's just good. Like it's just like a really solid like double reborn. I really like this card. Um, it comes up sometimes, not all the time, but it's good enough to where I really like it. It's just a lot of free extra bodies. Um, white Aura Whale, again, this combos very well with White Reincarnation, but it's not like amazing. You don't go into it all the time, but it's just a nice option to have, especially going into a board. Um, all right, this is where it gets a little weird, and I want to kind of explain myself here. Um, the other White Aura, Monikaros and uh, Ravenous Krako Dragon, whatever, Level 9 Kraken, uh, Kraken Dragon. So these two cards um, in tandem go very well together with the uh, Abyss Shark and the, um, what's it called? And the Goaty Tuners or the White Sardines. So a lot of the times you can have extra bodies on the field when you're doing like comboing off. And I wanted the those times to be, to get some kind of value or disruption. And the best one I could find, because you're locked in the water all the time, is um, going, using the Abyss Shark and then synchroing it with maybe an extra tuner you have or a sardine to go into the white aura. And then the white aura, when it's synchro summon, you could target a fish in the graveyard and special summon it back. Um, so you can bring back the same tuner and then use that and the tuner, which is level seven, to go into the crocodragon. And then that gives you a free draw um, when you do it that way, which is very nice, which can be helpful. And then also, it, like, it's just, it's nice interruption that you get for free and an extra draw. Um, it's the best way I could describe it. For what could could have been nothing, it can now go into something. Because a lot of the times, I see people ending with a Bish Shark, and it's just like sitting there, and that really bothers me. And I don't want it to just sit there and do nothing. Because this card is so broken, and it shouldn't be a sitting there doing nothing card. So I want a Bish Shark to either go into like the Crocosaur, or be able to go into Coral Anemone or Abyss Keeper to then continue the play. Or maybe you can use White Shark and Abyss Shark and like a level two to go into an eight synchro. Like I just want it to go somewhere and it going nowhere was really bothering me. Um, so yeah, that's that. And then uh, Stealth Kraken, this card's still really good. Like burning, quick effect popping, really strong. Coral Anemone, an excellent, excellent thing to have in here, especially with the white stuff, being able to bring stuff back to making tuners comes up all the time. And Abyss Keeper, Again, this card's another great extender to get some of these like the like the bad cards out of your hand, and you get some really cool lines sometimes where you can go like a bish like you can do like like I said it's, it's the line with the mermaid shark, a bish shark, um, grab leech. These two go into the bish keeper, a bish keeper leech, and then that goes into 
um, the synchro play in your opponent's turn. So, like, it's not the best starter, but it's a starter. Like, you can get your guys going. That's the important thing. That's, like, a one-card line to get your go stuff going. So, I think it's pretty solid. So, that's it for the deck right now. The only thing I really wanted to play was Abyss Dweller, because, again, Fire King um, and is really, really good, and I just want maybe, like, a more counter to that. And I think Abyss, Abyss Dweller really could see play in this, because um, Abyss Shark going into a water is um, really helpful. Oh, no, it's only for a number. Never mind. So, I guess you don't really need Abyss Dweller then, but like, you can play it. I, I don't know. Like, Abyss Dweller is just pretty good next format. It's just, uh, I figured like it's something worth mentioning. For side deck-wise, I really have no idea. Like, I don't even want to play Shifter in this going second anymore. Maybe you can now um, with, like, the Whale stuff and the White stuff. Um, but, like, if you're putting Shifter in, you don't want to play the White stuff because it conflicts too much. So I I don't I really don't even like Shifter in this deck anymore because of just how it's operating. But if you're going second, this deck needs a lot of help going second. Maybe it's worth it if you can find a good line with a Bish Shark, right? Like, if you can do a line with a Bish Shark, then it might be worth it to go, like, Shifter... Um, and then go like uh, either Mermaid Shark and Abyss Shark to go uh, to like a combo line maybe with to get into a six synchro or like an eight synchro to banish them. But like it's not again, it's it's just weird. It's very weird. It's awkward. So overall, that's just my thoughts on the main deck. So overall, hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. And um, if you did and the explanations, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. This is just where I'm at right now. I'd love to hear more suggestions down below. I think I'm going to take a break from Godi though. I put so many time into this. And this is where I've came. And I think this deck list looks a lot different than what other people are playing. I don't think I've seen anything as similar to this one. So let me know what you think down below. Okay, guys, really quickly, I actually have a replay here. I just wanted to show you really fast just to kind of show you how this deck can operate. Because I think it's really cool. Um, so I'm just going to like kind of speed through this. Um, so pretty much we have uh, White Sardine here. And then we can use White Reincarnation. And then we can add our White Sunfish. And then this is where we can do the Sunfish line. And then I can bring back the sardine and then go into our six, six, banish the uh, level six, and then use that to come back. This effect, he ashes. Even if he ashed the white reincarnation, we had a shark anyway, so we could have still done the same one. We were playing through ash every time here, no problem. So now we are going to use the uh, Pacey's and the level six Godi Synchro to then go into Dragite. And then this, uh, the Synchro is going to banish the Pacey's from the graveyard because you can banish any... F oh, my God. You can banish any fish um, in your graveyard to banish it and add a fish with equal or well for your deck to your hand. So you are able um, to add this. And then you are going to summon the Abyss Shark. And then this is going to add our Silent Angler. And then you can go into our uh, number four. So here you're actually ending on about four to five interruptions, I believe, um, with how this worked out. Again, we don't even have the other tuner monster to go off of. But like, this is where like the moving parts come into play because you can't go into a six on your opponent's turn with this. So the it just feels weird. But um, yeah, but just, I'll just show you what happens. So he goes reinforcement of the army. Um, and then he searches gold pride Leon. Oh, this is goblin uh, uh, gold pride, by the way. Um, so he's just Captain Carry, since uh, he's up in life now. Very cool interaction, actually. I didn't know this. Upstart Goblin back at three is now the gold prides get a little bit better. Um, so he uses Carry to search the trap card to start your engines. And then he uses the uh, Rider to detach off my Exceed monster, which is crazy. Um, this lets him get to the spell card. I don't want him to get to the Exceed, so I use it to destroy the Goblin monster. And now he is able to use the Grand Arrival. I negate it with Dragite because I have a water in the graveyard. He then uses Leon to um, summon from hand. And then from here, I use the Paces finally to then Synchro into the Axan. Axan effect will banish itself and the Captain Carry. And now the Axan in Graveyard will activate to banish the level 6 from Graveyard to bring itself back. And now this guy will activate to banish the Paces from the Graveyard to bring itself back. And then he will use his effect to search for any fish that's going to add the Snopios, and then that is going to banish the White Sardine. So now we have another interruption set up from this too, keep in mind, which is very important. So now he normal summons Captain Carry. So this is where we can go our Scorpios, and now Scorpios can banish the Zep and a fish from the graveyard to special summon itself. The Zep will then immediately trigger, and the Scorpios will trigger, um, so that... You, uh, the Zep will come out, and then you can immediately synchro the Axen and the Zep to go into a Great Beyond. Great Beyond will banish the board, and then the Snopios will be able to add itself back to hand. And then on the following turn, you will have Great Beyond uh, Paces coming back to the deck, and then you have Snopios in hand. And then on your opponent's turn, um, you can just use Snopios effect to banish the Axen and the Piskies from uh, the graveyard. Um, or not from the graveyard, from the... Well, this will be in the graveyard. Um, but yeah.
you you have more extension. That's all I'm going to say. You have more extension. Like, trust me, there's just more extension. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, that's just like a general example I wanted to show you guys of the deck. So again, I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you did and let me know any recommendations down below. See you in the next video.